welcome back to the program on this Monday morning. Let me just uh, tell you something about the, our guest in this segment of the program. He says, my business is, the name is Bijou Caribbean Connect. Our mission is to connect people and services everywhere. We are a 42-year-old business in Trinidad and Tobago. We provide online radio and television platforms, presence for local and international organizations, and also partner with international organizations needing technical marketing assistance in getting their message heard. The first thing we have done is to install on our website a language converter that has the capability to convert into 65 languages, making communication easy for others to understand what we are about in their own language. We give you the opportunity through our systems to have professional dialogue about religion, family life, amongst others, through our international conference call system that can accommodate up to 1,000 participants with 65 international phone numbers plus or 15 global online radio stations, also two online television stations, with our main radio station being WCAN Radio. We continue building a reservoir of clients, products, and other services through our global interconnected network, making it easy for them to leverage with the world, using tools that most of the global community are already using, but combined with the technology we have developed here at Bijou, we are able to broadcast your information from our studios to anywhere on the planet with an emphasis on directing your message to the smart device of the citizens of any country, thereby making it accessible and easy to connect with those who are trying to reach and influence. Dr. Clarence Green, there's a lot, and, and there's more. Good morning, how are you? Thanks well, good for thanks. having me. Good thanks, good to see you. Good morning so to I, the nation as well. Right, so I, I told your viewers we're gonna be talking about this. Maybe, that, maybe that's just a small, that's a small uh, snippet of, of, of what you do, the question of, of uh, we've we seen a lot of the reporting on it in the country in the last couple of months, something called human smuggling, and some people talk about human trafficking. Now, let me ask, what, what's the difference? The difference between human trafficking and human... So human uh, smuggling is like... People human get, getting from like one border to the next, to next. People without get going through the, the proper channels. Exactly, getting out from one, and, one country, yeah. bypassing immigration. Um, in, in our country, it would be like that. In other countries, it, it's any form of transportation that will get you there. Trucks, whatever it is. And, and in some cases, you know, people die doing that. And that's, that's something that is done not by force. That's something that is willfully done. That's something that you have agreed to do. Right. So, like, let's cases. say uh, across the, the, the American continent, from north, to, from south to north, and so on, you're moving from countries to the next, bypassing customs and immigration uh, by, by land or, or by sea and by sea. That, that, that's yeah. human smuggling. Yeah, yeah that's that's the, that's the smuggling aspect of it. Right, and human trafficking. That can easily turn into human trafficking. Like how? It can easily turn because you're in a situation now where the vulnerability of not having the right paperwork in a particular country. And in, in a lot of cases, what you see is people who are opportunists, and that's a nice way of putting it, nice way of putting it, where because of your vulnerability, looking for work and, and all of that, you, you, your vulnerability allows you to fall into situations where people take advantage of you against your will. This one is against your will. And they're against your will, meaning that you could end up working for people for their own gain, whether it's sexual exploitation or you know, forced labor, or whatever, any one of those areas against your will. And because it's against your will, it's, it's now a, a different name completely. All right, so let me tell you, let me give, let me give you a sense of, of how, how I know it from, from what I know, how, how some of these things operate. So somebody leaves here and well, goes to the United States by irregular means. Right. You get there and you want to get a job. And you get a job, but you, you you're being paid less than the market rate. You're being asked to, to perform duties that are not on, or at least, at least not to your expectation. And you, you have to do these things if you want to, to stay there or if you want to make some money to help yourself. That, well, it's, it's more than that. Right. Because what happens is that um, there's a lot of people that travel outside of Trinidad and Tobago and overstay their time in different countries and don't get into a situation like that. They may get paid under the table, yeah. or, you know, but that, that doesn't define human trafficking. Right. Human trafficking is a totally different thing where you are forced, you know, and the, the words I'm using is very important, it's forced, it's like forced labor, 
forced labor has different categories. One is sexual exploitation. One is actual labor. But you're forced to be in a situation that you don't want to be in. Yeah. And you are not getting the pay. Somebody is getting paid for your labor, labor against your will. You're not receiving any you of You're not getting any, any income. Any compensation okay. for that. Your rights are taken away. Right. So in some cases, your passports are taken away. You're threatened not to report to immigration or to call the police or whatever it is because, um, and you're scared because you're already illegal in the country. You came through the, the system illegally. And now you're in a situation where your, your total rights as a human being is taken away. You're almost in a situation, that's why we call it modern day slavery. Yes, my, my idea about human trafficking was always from, from the, the, the sexual exploitation uh, um, context, and I saw a movie which sort of captured it good. I think the, uh, uh, Liam Neeson, I think it was the star mm -hmm. in it. I think there's a one word to the title of the movie. His daughter was, was, was kidnapped somewhere at an airport and taken mm -hmm. to some other country and was beaten, made a, a sex slave of. Yeah. And he, he went and found her and killed a whole set of people in, 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 in an attempt to get her back, which he, he did. So my idea about, about human trafficking always is about is about people sexual. kidnapped for sexual uh, exploitation. But that is not the only dimension that's the of it. That's the most famous one. That's the most known aspect of it. It's like when we talk about domestic violence in, in Trinidad and Tobago and most of the countries, you hear it from a female perspective. So all you see when you hear the word domestic violence, you hear women as victims. Women as you victims, have right? men as you, victims. You have the men, you have old women, you have so I'm just, I'm just not changing the topic, but I'm just trying to say, when you hear about human trafficking, right. there are different areas of human trafficking. The most known one and the, more, the one that we focus on the most is the sexual exploitation. Yeah. It's very dangerous and, and, and it needs to be addressed and talked about, but you have forced labor. It falls under forced labor, but you have different categories. So you have people who might be working in a supermarket or working in a, in a, in a, you know, in a place but the same thing applies. They're not being sexually molested in, in that way. And the words I'm using, I'm trying to use mild words, but the actual word for sexual exploitation is really rape. Yes. You're being raped. Right, right. We call it prostitution, we call it all these things, but it's being raped because remember, there's prostitution out there as well that people make a decision to have that lifestyle. Nobody's forcing them right. to. In this case, you're doing the same thing of prostituting, but it's against your will. And so you're forced to do something that you're not, you don't want to be in. That one is, that's where the exploitation, and the word exploitation is important for people to understand. It's an exploitation that, that happens because it's against your will, so you're exploiting you. In, in essence, we call, we call um, the whole area of human trafficking an abuse of, an abuse of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, of the, underprivileged, the, the abuse of, people use power on you because you're yeah. vulnerable. That's the word I'm looking for. The abuse of the vulnerable. Because any layer of vulnerability, you're open and susceptible to somebody taking advantage of you. And when that happens, you're forced to do things because now you're looking for some shelter, you're looking for food, you're looking for some basic things in life to, to, to function as a normal human being. And people prey on that. And, and, and because you're vulnerable, you're susceptible to accept by force. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your life depends on it. And your life depends on it. So to what extent, w w where we are in Trinidad and Tobago, as far as these things are concerned? Trinidad and Tobago has some serious problems in terms of that because when I came back in 2015, it, it, I, st I started seeing little things from national security that suggested to me, because of the training I got, that there was something happening in Trinidad and Tobago that there might be human trafficking. And people were not completely convinced that it was happening here. But more and more as I was trained here as well with, with national security, counter trafficking, you know, and all that. So you were um, a cop, you were? I would, uh, yes, I was trained with, um, counter trafficking, they, they do training for people who are involved in it. I was trained outside in the US. Um, I got some training there. Um, my PhD doesn't say that. My PhD is more the king of religious. <laughs> but, 
But um, yes, I was trained and um, did a, quite a few amount of things outside the United States doing, doing work there. I traveled to England from time to time doing lectures and, and showing people. The idea is that I'm, I'm not in law enforcement. I'm in education, which is the, the top of the thing to, to kind of curb this thing. You have to train and, and um, teach people to identify not necessarily to solve the issue, but the more you train people to understand what this thing is about and how hideous it is and how it affects you and me, then people are more aware and people become, they function at a safer level um, in the country. Trinidad and Tobago has some serious problems with that simply because um, what added to it is the whole situation in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. When that situation got chronic in Venezuela, as we know, um, people were desperate to get out of Venezuela because they wanted to keep and maintain a certain lifestyle. And that lifestyle seemed to be eroding below them in a country they had lived all these years. And what happened is that they started you to migrate you to think is, You think is that to what extent that is, that is more primary than people just uh, refuse to live in a system where they, they can't express themselves, they exactly. can't express their views, they can't object to exactly. anything that, exactly. uh, you know. That so they were looking for freedom. They were looking for a better life. They were looking for a quality life. And so they started migrating to different places. The nearest places that they could train that was one. And so they started coming here by any, any means they could. Some came legally, some came illegally. The, major, the majority of people came illegally. And that's why I think you could realize that the government put some things in place when they had them kind of. The registration process. Registration process and all of that because it began to get out of hand. And they, they, like I said, they came here with nothing. That is a vulnerable situation already for most yeah. of them, a lot of the women. And so they found themselves, in some cases, promises of jobs from unscrupulous people within this country. And when they got here, there was not the job that they were promised. Your, your, your passport was confiscated, so it's like jumping from the fire into the, from the pot into the fire. Your, your passports were confiscated and were placed in situ situations where, wow, I never catered for this. I'm being held against my will. I'm forced to do things that I didn't want to do. And we're not talking people on the lower end only. We're talking people who are educated. Because remember, your vulnerability is, doesn't to do with your status. It, your vulnerability has to do with you are here illegally. The situation that you're in. The situation you are in. Mm -hmm. So you're now forced in a foreign country without means to f take care of yourself and your children and whoever that is. And somebody made a big promise to you that you're going to get a job that looks legally, looks sounded good. But when you got here, that unraveled before you that is not what you look. And do, do we, do we find, to what extent we find people who end up in these situations? What, 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 is, what is the ratio on which we... The thing about it is that um, the people to give you the, the, the ratio of that would be more counter-trafficking as to actually give you the figures, but I do know that it has escalated into a bad situation in Trinidad and Tobago. It has escalated, and if it wasn't escalated to the point, there was no need for counter-trafficking to be formulated. The reason for counter-trafficking was formulated is because they realized we have a problem on our hand, and the government stepped in by, you know, putting this, this, this particular unit within um, national security to address it. Yes, I've heard about situations where, um, you know, from the briefings that I get from time to time as to what's going on, there are situations where people are arrested. There are situations where girls are arrested in Trinidad, found out, I remember, there was one time, I, I think the police raided somewhere here in Woodbrook and they found a whole other ladies in a, a, a place somewhere there and everybody said human trafficking. And then there was another place and, in, in, and, in Cuba. And, and it, it may not necessarily it may not be. necessarily that because you see, some of them, what, what the unit has to do is investigate each case to identify a particular <coughs> characteristic. So it's not like you find 20 women in a room and you, you're, you know, the public will say, oh, that's human Automatically, you, Automatically you, 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 you see that. Them. But each case now has to be investigated carefully to see if it has the characteristics that they and the government came up with that determines that person is human trafficking against their will. Yeah. Because there might be women in the particular room that they volunteer to do. And yeah. that's the case. But Trinidad has gotten to the place where um, it, it is a bad situation. It, it has gotten worse. And the economy and COVID and everything else didn't make it any better. It's alive and well in Trinidad and Tobago and people need to be aware of it. The sad part about it on that level is 
we blame the women that are coming into the country and we, because we're seeing that the majority of them that are doing it, um, the prostitution and stuff like that. But there's another side. We have Trinidad people and Trinidad men and organizations in Trinidad and Trinidadian organizations running the that business. are running the business. And that's the part that nobody's talking about as well. So it's not just their side of it, you know, while, while it has its discoloration for being a prostitute and all that, but there are people within our country who are in some case deceiving or running um, organizations that are, you know, employing these people and doing this thing. And I'm, and I'm, I'm saying employing is not a good word. Yeah, no, I want to come back to the, to, the, to the domestic situation, but um, very often we, we see these reports in the paper, there hasn't been any in the last couple of weeks or months about young ladies going missing. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the feeling is that so they, they, they get taken and they get taken out of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, my question is, to what extent we, we ever find people who, who are taken against their will and end up in, in some situation where they're being exploited? To what extent, what is the, the success rate that, that we have to finding people wherever they are the last reports I had, if I would sit here and tell you that that never happened, I would lie. <laughs> it would be a lie. Um, there has been suspicions about people, um, women in Trinidad that have got into that situation and, and disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, nobody knows where they are. Nobody can really say if it was a human trafficking. The suspicion is that it was human trafficking, but there's no legal proof to say that has happened. I have known people that are around me. I've had friends who, um, who told me that family members disappeared for years and up to this day they don't know where they've gone, male and female, all right? So it, it exists, um, but there is no legal proof in a lot of cases. What we have, the legal cases that, that I, have, um, I know about are cases that come through counter trafficking. And I don't work at counter trafficking, let me make that really clear. But I try to get as much information because going out into the public and educating, you know, different organizations, the churches and, and different businesses and stuff like that, um, it is good to have data. Trinidad doesn't have a whole lot of data, but I know they are working on data and that, that database is being built. And I know of cases that they have made arrests. I know of cases that counter trafficking has gone into and examined. And is that a success story at all, this counter trafficking unit? It is, a, it is a success story in the sense that we have a presence that is focusing on the, on the, on the problem. Whether or not that success turns out to be what the public expects, that's a whole different story as to who's measuring that. Um, I don't know, um, there are cases that um, is pending in court right now that I know that of people who they've, they've arrested yeah. and charged and waiting the outcome for, of that. For tra case. Trafficking, for trafficking into or trafficking, out of Trinidad? Trafficking into Trinidad. There are cases of people who, there's a story by the name of Sarah, if you ever get a hold of that story, um, they would be able to expo you know, expose that story to you more. Um, of a young lady that you know, came into Trinidad and she told her story publicly, and, and they used that as a, as a means of educating people to identify in her life, um, even prior before she she was taken from somewhere and brought and, here yeah. against her will. Against her will. And, and, um, and then eventually she got away from, from yeah. her. No, but what I mean, she, she was forced into what kind of activity? Sexual activity. Sexual activity. And, um, it didn't start with the sexual activity. It started with just the labor aspect of it. And we grew into the sexual aspect, exploitation. And then she got away. And um, after she got away, he came in contact with her. Um, she told her story. There's a lot of things that goes on behind the scenes when somebody's um, taken away from their abductors and stuff like that. There's a lot of trauma that they go through. There's a lot of emotional situations. They have to go through counseling. They have to go through a whole lot because, you know, the, the, I want people to get, understand that what happens is that people are raped against their will over and over. Over and yeah, over well, I mean, every single day. You know, you know and you know, the statistics we have um, from outside is that if a young lady is captured for seven years, um, she scarcely make it out alive. But the thing about it is that the amount of times that she's raped in seven years, the, the figures are horrible. 
and, and you see, the, again, the, the, these movies or, or parts of movies where they, where they, they focus on that. People are drugged into, into a stupor. They become just, just you know, automatons, as they say. You know, they, so all that is, is, is real. All that is bad because you see, you're beaten into nothing. Yeah. Some people may, may not, some people may, you know, may put up a fight because <laughs> this is not what I want. I didn't cater for this. Nobody, nobody wants to get into prostitution. No, no woman comes up and say, well, I want to be in prostitution as, as a career just like that. You know, it has to be a situation that, that drew her into that. And when it comes into being forced, I can't see anybody not putting up a fight against that. But at the end of the day, who wins? They beat you down. They, you know, they torment you. They, they do things to, to young women that force them. Do you think so, prostitution is never a conscious choice? Prostitution is a conscious choice, but most times people are driven to do that because of situation. Nobody gets up from a young lady and decides I want to be a prostitute. There's something in life that happened that was terrible enough for you and your situation is now is if I don't do this, my children is going to die. My children will starve. I will starve. What can I do? And, so, yeah, and, and, and you're forced to make those decisions. Let's go back to, to the, 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 the story of, of being a diner. Uh, and working for the Yankee dollar. That, 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 because sometimes people say that, that so th th that's a, a, people see those kinds of opportunities where they exist, existed when the Yankees were here. That's how you make some money. Uh, but, but what you're saying is that in, in many cases, people get to that kind of thinking because of things that may have happened with us. And it's not because, well, you know, there's money to be made. And no, 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 no. You know, you're talking about young women. Mm -hmm. well, I, <laughs> okay, but go ahead Most young women will not, that will never be the ambition. Mm. And, and the thing about it is that um, sometimes things happen in the home through lack of parenting or lack of training. Like a proper or depending parenting on, or something. Yeah, things happen early in life that give you experiences that may force you into situations like that. Um, let's look at, let's look at, if you want to bring in things like um, incest, let's bring in things like the death of a parent, let's bring in things like all that. All those things allow children to become vulnerable. And then when you, you, when you become vulnerable, if you become vulnerable, and you end up in a home, this big thing that we happened last week about, last couple of weeks with, with this report. Yeah. Right? The Sabga report. Right, the Sabga report. And we're talking about all these children that was taken advantage in these homes. Um, we're talking about, um, who takes care or who looks out for the caregiver? Because this child is vulnerable because of some circumstances that they end up in this institution. And then when they get there and think that they're getting care, somebody in there preys on them. That's another, that's another layer that could lead a young lady down that path of either voluntarily making a decision to be a prostitute. Let's just say that this is an opening statement because yeah. it's, 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 it's deep and it's wide and we, we, we could do this in, in stages to get a better understanding of what we're talking about when people talk about kinds of trafficking, when people talk about human smuggling and big business. the rest of it. Ugly big business tied into the mafia, tied into drugs. When you're talking about an industry that, that reaps anything like $150 billion per year. When you're talking about every 20 seconds somebody, somebody's child in some part of the world. Some part of the world, every 20 seconds. Every 20 seconds. Yeah. And growing. The issue is to see how we continue to monitor how we're doing it in yeah. Trinidad and Tobago, but we have to leave it there for now, Dr. Clarence Craig. Thank you very much. Nice having you. Yeah, certainly. Nice, nice being here, in fact. Nice, <laughs> nice having you. Nice having you here. Yeah. Well, that's our broadcast for this Monday morning. We want to thank you for watching. We want to thank all our guests. And to tell you that we will continue this kind of programming here on WESN as nowhere else you could find this kind of stuff. In half an hour from now, we take you to Talking Point with Sharon Small. But for now, I'm Andy Johnson. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.